I saw this story and I had me a larf. At least 14,000 unpaid IRS workers did not show up for work as broad shutdown disruption hits tax agency, according to House aides. Now, I'm not laughing because these people are facing hardship. No, that's terrible. We, we, did, we, we did learn that the government is going to be reopening, so I have that story too. But when I saw this, the only thing, the reason I laughed, the only thing I could think of is somewhere there is a libertarian with a, don't, with a Gadsden flag, don't try to me, behind him, and he's, he's reading his Washington Post paper, and he looks, he looks up after reading the headline, smiles as a single tear rolls down his cheek. The 14,000 IRS workers did not show up to work. That is insane. That is a ton of employees. <laughs> so I only want to read a little bit of this because what I really want to talk about is the government is reopening. So I say at least 14,000 unpaid workers in the I in, at the IRS division that includes tax processing and call centers did not show up for work to this week despite, despite orders to do so, according to two House aides posing a challenge to the Trump administration's ability to minimize the damage from the government shutdown. The Trump administration ordered more than 30,000 employees back to work unpaid to prepare for tax season, which is set to begin next week. But of the 26,000 workers called back to the IRS division that includes tax processing centers and call centers, 9,000 could not be reached and another 5,000 claimed hardship exemption. IRS officials have told members of Congress, according to aides, who spoke on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to speak about policy numbers. Okay, I don't want to go through this whole story. The other thing is, LaGuardia Airport shuts down all inbound flights because they don't have enough air traffic controllers. So I actually know, uh, I, I, I follow some people who are air traffic controllers, and I can see that they're facing some serious hardship. It's a stressful, stressful job. And when I was talking to them about how this job works, I'm like, I'm really surprised more people don't die, right? Because that, that, they, it's seriously stressful work, uh, you know, doing air traffic control. But here we go. Here's the news. Trump announces deal to end partial government shutdown. It's from Fox News. President Trump said, Trump said Friday that he will support a short-term spending bill to reopen the government temporarily ending the partial government shutdown that has dragged on for more than a month, despite a day earlier saying Republicans would not cave on his demands for, uh, on, for funding for a wall on the southern border. I am very proud to announce we have reached a deal to end the shutdown and reopen the federal government, he said to applause from gathered cabinet members. He said the deal would keep the government open for three weeks until February 15th, and that a bill would go before the Senate immediately. He made reference to his previous threats to declare a national emergency, calling it a very powerful weapon, but saying he didn't want to use it. The deal appeared to include no money for a wall or steel barrier, but he said he hoped negotiations would continue to come to an agreement on wall funding. Walls should not be controversial, he said. I was wrong. I thought Trump would never back down and just sit there and let everyone stew. But Trump, you know what? Actually, it's really funny that I was wrong. I thought the reason Trump wouldn't back down, and oh, hold on, it's only a three-week bill. So Trump might be trying to like, you know, there's still some strategy here. But I thought Trump would just be like, I don't care. I'm going to do your thing. And that's, that's not true. But, but I'll say this too. The Democrats refuse to negotiate. Maybe Trump's long play is it makes the Democrats look unwilling. This is going to last another three weeks. What has Trump earned from this? For one, he can say, I, I walked back from what I wanted. Trump wanted a 2,000 mile concrete, big, beautiful concrete wall. Now he only wants 200 miles and a down payment on his big, beautiful wall. And now he's saying steel slats. Trump has walked back quite a bit. A lot of people, even the Washington Post, are saying Trump's at the table. Where are the Democrats, right? Now Trump is saying, okay, let's do three weeks. This, I think, is really good for Trump's position because it shows he's willing to make concessions and the Democrats aren't, which means after this three weeks, he can be like, how many times do I have to give you? And you won't. And he's going to try and shift the blame on the Democrats, which I think they're going to have to eat and people are going to be upset about it. I'm, but, but I will say again, I said Trump would never back down because that's who Trump is. But he did. He did at least for three weeks. The shutdown was sparked by disagreement over President Trump's demand for $5.7 billion in funding for a wall or steel barrier on the southern border. Democrats countered initially with $1.3 billion for general border security, while Trump said initially he would not sign anything without wall funding. And he did. So the, the Democrats are likely going to sing they defeated Trump. But I don't think that's the smart move in the long term, right? I think what's going to happen is in three more weeks, Trump's going to have a ton of leverage over his willingness to back down and how he wasn't obstinate. 
In the last few weeks, the fight turned particularly nasty, with Trump canceling a Democratic congressional trip to Afghanistan after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called on Trump to delay his State of the Union address or submit in writing. Trump announced Thursday that he would delay the address, but if the government reopens, then it could take place on Tuesday, as had been previously scheduled. Here's the other really important point. Trump's going to reopen the government for three weeks. This will likely allow him to give his State of the Union address, in which I guarantee he is going to go, he's going to go ham on calling for border security, saying he needs a wall. He's going to talk probably endlessly about illegal immigration and crime. And this is a huge advantage for him. Temporarily reopen the government for three weeks, get your State of the Union address, say all of these things, and then three weeks later say, okay, now that I've gotten to say what I need to say, let's do it. Trump could still do a national, draft a national, uh, uh, um, call for a national emergency. But let's read on. After bills to reopen the government failed in the Senate Thursday, Trump signaled that a large down payment on funding, potentially less than the $5.7 billion, could be sufficient to end the stalemate. He suggested that a prorated down payment on the wall without providing a concrete dollar figure could be viable. Once again, Trump is the one negotiating. You could argue it shows weakness. I'm not here to say, you know, anything good or bad about the fact that Trump is doing it, other than that he did. Lindsey Graham had also suggested that a three-week continuing resolution could be the way forward. If they come to a reasonable agreement, I would support that, Trump told reporters. The partial closure of the government has led to hundreds of thousands of workers furloughed or working without pay, with groups representing the workers increasing their calls for D.C. to end the deadlock and get workers paid again. Many workers missed their second paycheck on Friday, and that sucks. I think that's not cool, you know. If people have a job, they should expect to get paid. I will also point out, don't take a federal job if without, like, you need to expect this happens. It happens all the time. Also, for those that are with, I believe, Department of Defense or Armed Forces, Navy Federal is, I have, I have a Navy Federal account. It's fantastic. I don't have to worry about this because I'm not a government employee, but for people who are furloughed, you're, you never miss a paycheck. Never. Because Navy Federal and I, I believe USAA just automatically keep your paychecks coming. And then once the, the shutdown ends and they get that payment to your bank, they absorb that. So it's like you never miss a beat. That's really cool. Navy Federal is fantastic, by the way. Every former secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, including former White House Chief of Staff John Kelly, sent a letter to the president and Congress on Thursday asking them to restore the department's funding. <laughs> yes, please give us our money. DHS employees who protect the traveling public, investigate and counter terrorism, and protect critical infrastructure should not have to rely on the charitable generosity of others for assistance in feeding their families and paying their bills while they steadfastly focus on the mission at hand, the letter said. This is unconscionable. President Trump on Saturday announced a compromise plan that funded the wall while extending protection to 700,000 illegal immigrants brought to the country as children and 300,000 immigrants from countries designated unsafe to return. However, Democrats rejected the plan even before Trump announced it, and a Senate version of the, fa of the plan failed to get the 60 votes needed on Thursday. A second bill already passed by the Democrat-controlled House to reopen the government also fell short with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez being the sole Democrat to refuse because she refuses to fund ICE. Now, I'll say this. At least she's, like, sticking up for what she said she'd do. How many other progressive Democrats voted yes? She was the only one. I think it's a ridiculous position, but I gotta hand it to her. She said she'd do it, and she did, and she deserves some respect for at least saying what, do it, like, like, come on, you know? It's a ridiculous position. I don't support it, but I can respect the integrity of saying, you know what, I said I would, so here you go. Even though she did vote to fund ICE before, I think she realized what she had done. So, anyway, Trump tweeted, Nancy just said she doesn't understand why, very simply, without a wall, it doesn't work. Our country has a change to greatly reduce, a, a chance to greatly reduce crime, human trafficking, gangs, and drugs should have been done for decades. We will not cave. On Thursday, Trump had promised that Republicans will not cave on border wall demands. And then Trump, well, I'll, I'll say this. I don't want to say Trump caved because this is a temporary solution. But it does seem like, much to um, me being incorrect, Trump really is willing to negotiate and back down on this to a rather extreme degree. A lot of people are mad. I've seen a lot of, a lot of Trump supporters angry because they wanted that big, beautiful 2,000 mile concrete wall. But for the most part, I think Trump's base just wants border security and they'll take what they can get. Does that, so I don't know, if, you, if you're a Trump supporter, how do you feel about this deal? You can comment on that. But uh, I will say I'm surprised. I figured Trump to be way too obstinate, way too bullheaded to actually, like, actually give in to any negotiating or, or demands. But I'll also say, I gotta admit, this makes me particularly angry with the Democrats 
for doing nothing. It's not just me, right? I didn't, I, look, listen, I didn't come out and say, oh, the Democrats, blah, blah, blah. The Washington Post did. The Washington Post said, why won't the Democrats talk about this? And so now I'm sitting here saying like, Trump is actually giving in? Man, that's, that's, that's pathetic. It, for, the, the Democrats could have at least tried to play ball. They did nothing. So why should I be mad at Trump over this? He's actually reopened the, he's, he's, he's caved, you know, for the most part. We'll see what happens after this three weeks though, because this might provide Trump that narrative. Me saying, wow, Trump gave in, he's willing to negotiate, might be the leverage he needs. So then in three weeks he goes, why won't you negotiate? I am. And the Washington Post is a really good example of that. So anyway, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. You can follow me for more videos. They're going to be on my main channel tomorrow at 4 p.m. YouTube.com slash TimCast. And on this channel, 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 6 p.m., 6.15, 6.30. I'll see you next time.